useful or anything like that. So you feel basically pretty fragile. In other words, all of this is very delicate. It's just hanging by it. You're, you're basically in rehab by a thread here. Yeah. Because the day that you walk out of there, you would go right back to your friends. Yeah. Tina, sound familiar? Yep. How old are you now? Nineteen? Nineteen. When did you start? About a year and a half ago. How did you get involved? I mean, you weren't 12, it you was, weren't 14. It was you were 17 or so. One of my best friends introduced me to all, you know, his friends in La Familia. But guns have affected your life, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, they what have. What happened to your boyfriend two months ago? Two months ago, he was stabbed in a, an argument, and he was protecting his friends. He took it for a friend, and four days later, he, was, he died. And what happened last week? Last week, um... One of my friends was found in his living room, shot in the head. What's happened since you've come to New York City? Well, I got a phone call last night from my best friend, and there's been two drive-bys and a shootout. Members of La Familia, your, your, your group. Yep. Do you like them better than you like your family? Your reg your, I like your them as much as I do love them. I love them. They're my friends, you know. We're like a family. We stick together. I have talked to young women girls in situations like this and what drives me crazy and I think drives a lot of our audience out there crazy is how do you say that you want more and would do more for your friends than you would in your family how do you how does that happen uh, how does that how does that take place in your mind well I don't go around shooting people and hanging out with my friends because I want attention I do it because I feel that they love me, and I consider them my family. I do, and um, being around them makes me feel secure, more protective, and you know, when you're gonna get into a fight with somebody, like let's say in the corner street or anything, you got your friends to back up. When I go to my mom, sometimes I come home from school, say, oh, mom, I got, a, I got into a fight. She wouldn't care. She was like, oh, what happened? I told her, she's like, whatever, you know? If I was with my friends, I have backup. I have somebody to talk to. I feel very open with my friends. You sound tough and rough and mean. Do you want to feel that way? Yeah. You want to feel that way, Tina? Next, we will talk to a 15-year-old who tells us why she carried a weapon after this. You're just protecting yourself, making sure you don't get in the crossfire, make sure you don't get hurt. And it's just one big thing. You just got to be careful, and most of us are. And it's just... That's how it is. Some people get hurt. Some people are lucky. But everyone's time comes. Years old. She's still in a gang. Christine is 14. Michelle is 15. And Christina is 16. All have used guns, knives, and their fists to protect themselves while in a gang. Christina, where did you get a gun? From my mother. I stole it from her, out of her closet. When did she find out that you had it? I guess about a year or two years after. Would you take the gun to school? Yeah, I took it everywhere I went. Did your fellow gang members knew, know that you had a gun? Uh -huh. They would borrow it sometimes and like bring it back to me two days later or something. No compulsion? I mean, you sound like this is just everyday life for you. It was then. It was? Yeah. Uh, Michelle, you don't really look like that, do you? Uh, no. Right. You, we put, we've helped you with the disguise a bit, right? Yeah. What are you afraid of? Well, I've done bad things and also I have a gang after me. You have a gang after you? Why? It's pretty much a long story. Yeah? Yeah. You've done some bad things. Have you shot a gun? Yep. Do you feel powerful and proud to shoot a gun the way Christina describes being powerful with a gun? Yeah. Yeah. You're in control. You're in control, boy, and you're smiling and everything. Yeah, you're in control. Do you ever think about what could you what you could do with that gun? I didn't care. You didn't care. Why didn't you care? Because that's the attitude your friends had in the gang? Just the way I felt. Just the way you felt. And and those around you felt the same way? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Christina, are you in the gang still? No. Why not? Well, I was put in a treatment center, but um, I've been away from my home for about two to three years, living on my own, basically. 
um, living on the streets, taking care of myself, and being with friends that were in gangs right. who took care of me. What's the deal with uh, the colors? Is this a color for the for La Familia? Yep. Huh? La Vida. How how do you know? I mean, in other words, what is it that shows your fellow gang members that you're wearing the colors? I bandanas. Mean, bandanas. And just the colors. Just the, the colors. Not the. No, that's our thing. That's your thing. Yeah. That's the two of yours thing. Okay. What what did your parents say when they found out that you were in a gang, Michelle? Shock. Shock. Well, my mom had a, she had a funny idea that I was, because I, like, I always tagged up into my room and everything, but she never thought I was in it. Uh -huh. What would you tell her? I don't know, just, just like, what is this gang stuff? And I'm like, no, oh, my friend. And just like recently she found out that I was in it. She was shocked, but she had a funny feeling. And you're still in it now. Do you ever think about leaving? Once in a while. Do you feel scared to leave? No. You could walk away and it wouldn't be any problem. I could, but I don't want to. Why not? It's the way I feel. But, you know, it's what you feel. I mean, that's, you know, it's just the way you feel. There's got to be a reason for your feeling. What are the reasons for your feeling? Because I've been with them for three years. How can I just, like, walk away? They're your them? family, right? Yep. What's your mom? <laughs> My mom's family, but it's just... It's different. They were always there for me. Yeah. What was the initiation like in your gang, Christine? I had to fight five girls for two minutes. You had to fight five girls for two and minutes? And stand off. I couldn't fall. Fists? Yeah. That was how mine was, too. Yeah, mine, mine too. Other initiations are um, <laughs> having sex with a, a gang member or the leader of a gang member or a couple of guys. I never had to go through that, but a lot of my friends did. What was your, your initiation was the same, uh, Christina? Yeah. yeah. What did you have to do? I had to fight five girls. They were huge, and I was not allowed to fall. And how old were you at this time? Fourteen. You were 14 years old. Did you, did you uh, stand up the whole two minutes? Mm -hmm. Did you get a bloody nose? Oh, yeah. <laughs> how many, how many, how old is the oldest person in that gang? When I was in? Yeah. I don't know, maybe like 25, 23. So a 25-year-old would take a 14-year-old and tell her that she had to stand up for two minutes and fight five girls. She wanted to be in the gang, yeah. yeah. Yep. Was there ever a gun put to your head? Yeah. yeah. What was that about? Uh, I was hanging out by myself with maybe like three of my friends um, up at Subway where we all used to hang out. and. A gang that we are against came up and they recognized me and held a gun to my head saying that they were going to kill me. And that's why I got my mom's gun. Tina, do you know who she is? That's my boyfriend's sister. That's your boyfriend's sister? Your boyfriend who was killed? Two months ago. Did you know about all the gangs? <clears throat> Not really, no. I heard. Uh, he told me, but I didn't think it was that serious. You didn't think it was serious? No. Not like this, no. Not until I went down there, went after he got stabbed. And then I saw everything. But I don't, you know. <laughs> Is there anything you could tell her now? About gangs? <laughs> she should see it for herself, really. Because she knows, she saw my family, she saw what we all went through. So, she was there throughout the whole thing. Did your parents know that your brother was in a gang? No, they knew, but we just thought it was just, you know, just people here on our own. This is what I don't understand! How come we don't know? How can these people take a gun out of her house for two years and nobody know? How does that happen? How does that happen? Guess who was most surprised to find out two of these girls were in gangs? Their mothers will meet them next. Usually, like, you know, when we're bored or anything, or, you know, if we're bored, that's when you get in trouble because we just like to break an enter and stuff. If we don't have a ride anywhere, the first thing we do is go for a car. You know, it's not ours. We go there. We want, if we have a car, we want our own speaker systems and our own stereo, so we just take other people. The gun. I didn't know the gun was missing for almost a year. And then when I cleaned up the closet one day, cleaning out some stuff, I looked and uh, the gun was gone. And I kept thinking that an old boyfriend of mine may have taken it. And it never even dawned on me that she would have taken it. 
It wasn't until later that I found the, the case that the gun came in, in her closet. And I just couldn't believe it. I still just felt like, no, there's no way. You felt betrayed? Oh, betrayed? <laughs> yeah, I felt betrayed. <laughs> I felt afraid, too. Only after that did you start asking questions? Yeah, I asked questions, and she didn't tell me a lot. She told me a little bit. Well, let's, let's talk about how that discussion's go on. Do you say, Christina, where you been? Who you been hanging out with? Who are, these, who are your friends? Do you do all that? I knew her friends. They came to my house. I knew her friends. Lots of them came to our house. Nice people? Nice kids? Most of them were nice kids. I can't say they all dressed, you know, to what I would think was fine, but... They were all nice kids. Some of them would sit there and call me mom and sit and talk with me. They really were looking for attention. And these, and these were the same people who would go out with guns, rob yeah. people, steal, yes. shoot guns, drive by shooting? Mm -hmm. From our neighborhood, from our whole area. They'd hang out at the movie theater and she'd be, Mom, come on, pick us up pick my friend up and I'd pick him up and drop him at the movie. So you thought you were just like every suburban yeah. mom taking your taking kid? Taking your kid to drop him at the movie theater. I'd even say you're not hanging out in them gangs, are you? No, they hang out at Subway. That was just another gang, that's all. Were you ever afraid, Christina, that your mom would find out? No, there wasn't anything she could do about it. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Hey. Karen, what about you? How are you How we, with Christine? Um, I confronted her for probably, it started about two years ago because I knew she was on drugs. I didn't know what, but the reactions that she had to our conversations, questions, the home life. Um, but I didn't know she was in a gang actually until the school called me one day and um, the fights and things, they called me down and I'm like, Were you this surprised? is not my daughter. Yeah, because it was like, you've got the wrong Christina. You know, there's 1,500 kids in school. Can't be my daughter. And it was. When did all this change? I mean, when did you see these changes in your daughter? How old was she? First time, 10 years old. 10? We had, we had just recently moved to Florida. And she, she, she seemed to adjust initially real well. And we were ecstatic. Um, but it just seemed like within the first year of being here, the changes just st started showing up. The kids she hung out with, the things that she did. She tried to take her life when she was in fourth grade uh, because one of the other kids in school had done it and their parents decided that they would never hassle them again if they just wouldn't do it again. And she thought, well, maybe she could do the same thing. Um, you know, and, and from there it just escalated and it's just gotten horrible. The past year has been a nightmare. We have to find out the line here today as to what was so impressive about gangs for you all to join and what most kids, we hope, say, I don't want to live, I don't want anything to do with that. What was the most impressive part of the gang for you, Christina? Wow. Ocean, how about I have, it? I have to say something. Um, some of the parents think that, that we start everything. It's not always us that start everything. You know, some girl comes up in my face with, you know, with some bull, you know, I'm not going to stand there, turn around, go and tell my mom, oh, mom, this girl's bothering me. Why? I'm going to stand up for myself. Why not? Why not go to your mom and say, mom, this... Because it's not worth it. You know, I'm not going to be no going around, you know, school thinking, you know, that I'm some, some and little girl. Girl. It looks like you're a witch. I don't think so. Keep, and they'll just keep on doing it. What's that? I said, if you turn around and walk away, They'll come up to you again, and each time will get harder and harder and harder. Why don't you just report them to school? No, that's stupid. Why is that stupid? That's why it's supposed to be. It's not going to be stopping. Everybody can't talk at once. If you don't stand up for yourself, they'll keep on doing it. And if you go to the school, they're not going to do much. They're just The people are just going to get more angry, and they're just going to threaten you even more. What happens is the kids, they will tell the people at school they're going on that the problems are going on, they'll get suspended, they'll get sent home for a day, or what eventually happened with our daughter was that they just kept pushing her to the next grade because she was a troublemaker. She could get good grades when she was at school, so it was just push her through, get the trouble kids out of there. You know what a lot of parents in this audience, studio audience, and a lot of parents at home are saying about the two of you? You lost control. Oh yeah, we lost control, I agree. My, My daughter was beating kids up in school, I mean, I couldn't believe yeah. mothers were knocking on my door saying, I'm going to sue you because your daughter just busted my kid's lip open.
But when, I don't it's agree. Nice. We don't it's do the like You don't agree. I lost control of my daughter. I agree yeah. totally. Or, I know that. That's the one thing I've gotten over is I do. I do not feel. I won't say I'm not responsible at all, but not totally. She right. made decisions that she has to live by. Oh no. I like to know just what fascinates you so much that you feel the gang and the killing and all that you do is more important than being raised in a family and being a regular human being in society. It's nothing regular. Ocean. Ocean? <laughs> um, the thing I get out of it is the action. I like it. The action? I enjoy it. Wow. <laughs> wow. The action. Next, we're going to meet a guy who says, if you're in a gang, if you're in a gang, kids, you're going to be dead. You're going to be dead after this. You, you kind of wonder what's happening with our young people growing up. They're not getting, obviously... Stars in a movie called Just a Chance about kids in gangs. So what do you do, uh, Vincent? What do you tell them about the real life in gangs? Well, the bottom line is, you want to get whacked? You want to get a bullet put in your head? You want to get your neck slashed? You want to go to prison? That's the bottom line. That's what's going to happen. If you get into a gang? Bottom line. It's going to happen eventually to everybody here if they continue to stay in a gang. Did, did, Christina, you think you ever would go to jail? No. No? You think you'd go to jail now? Oh, yeah. Now I, now I think so. Okay. Let's go back up here. Michelle, you think how, still in earn, earn a gang, right? Yeah. You ever think you're going to go to jail? I really don't care. Why don't you care? Because I just don't. Well, let me ask you this. What do you care about? Nothing. No. No. You guys are getting mad back there, aren't you, Ocean? Yes. Right? Why are you getting mad? Because nobody out there knows how we live. Nobody out there knows how we live in the day. What does that mean? No, some parents are out there saying that, that the reason why we like asking is for attention. Yeah. You know? We're not out there to seek attention. If we wanted attention, we can get it ourselves. Wait, so what are you out there for? Just the action? Yeah. Just the action. Mm -hmm. Um, excuse me, but when you said that people don't know how you live, we, we're almost the same age as you. Matter of fact, I'm older than you are, and I might be the same age as some of you. I live in suburbia. Only thing that's different between me and you, I have self-control. If one of my friends get hurt, I'm going to be there for them. But I'm not going to risk my life for them. And another thing, you have all these opportunities. What you need to worry about is getting an education. I'm 16 years old. I have more common sense than you do. What you need to worry about is getting an education so you can get ahead of life. Then you can go back and help your friends. That's why you have First of all, when you get into these groups, you have to even question the gang members of these groups because if they're older than you, and they're still doing these same things. What are they leading, leading you to? They're poor, poor role models for you. You know how many people want to change places with you? they like them. They, they like them. Yeah, go ahead, Ocean. Can I say something? Sure. What I'm telling you now is how I was. I have been in a rehab for a month. I am trying to help myself. Right. As, I, okay. And I think that's great. And I think First that's great. All, so let me ask you this. In one month, how do you feel differently now than when you, what you did a month ago? Well, first of all, I don't do the things that I have done back then. Uh, you know, one of my counselors are in there. She's right behind you. Right. right I'm going there. to talk to her. Melanie. Yeah. And she knows I'm in her program, and I'm trying to make a difference of myself. Because what I did, when I look behind it, sometimes I sit there and I think, you know, laying in my room, that wasn't worth it. I go through therapy. I go to meetings. I sit there and I think all the time. It isn't easy for me. I went through three years, practically. Being in a gang, it is not easy for me to just get out of it. I'm trying to help myself. It's not like I'm still doing the same things I did, okay. you know? I understand. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me ask Melanie this. What's the difference, Melanie, would you say, between Ocean and Michelle, who's sitting right next to her, who's still in a gang? Not a lot. They both had a lot of life traumas and a lot of uh, childhood um, negative experiences. So if you talk about a family base to go home to, after school, they don't have much of one. Their mothers are busy taking care of the other kids. Right. And what chance uh, you think Michelle can get into rehab? Or Michelle can get out of the gang? Or Michelle can go a different way when she says she just doesn't care? Yes, I do. It's a long, it's a long slow process because we're a six-month program right. where I work. And uh, it takes a lot of time. And they have, 
they have ups and downs and ocean there has had a an incident already there it, it takes time mm -hmm. you know they've been living this way what for a long time what would you give her chances wow i i know them both and i love them dearly i 99 percent you think they're gonna they're gonna they're, make it they're great girls and they have our support at the at the facility and they know they have their positive peer role models now their friends from the right. center and i think they'll do great all right uh christine uh i i as i came in today mm -hmm. i saw you you were really upset How? why were you upset um these two girls in, in the back of me um i've seen them around and they hung around uh they hang around with the some of the ex gang members that I used to be with. And uh, I just found out today that one of my best friends was killed uh, last week, and his wig was Friday. And not only that, but at his wig, there was a shootout. There was a drive by. It wasn't just, enough that he died, that there was a shootout at his wig. Yeah. We'll be back after this. On the next morning. The girls, which is mainly our girlfriends. Which is like the girlfriends game. and girls we'd actually then we give got, them about. Then we got bitches. They're already and then they're the ones to fight. And then we got the hoes that we just use for sex toys. Is that what boys think of girls in gangs? How do the guys, uh, Jen and gangs, treat the girls? That was your boyfriend. That was my friend, and he said that, you know, that's... He said that about most people, but not everybody, you know? I mean, he's got friends that, you know, people love each other. Maury, that was my ex-boyfriend from uh, six months ago, and he was not like that. Mm -hmm. He was just getting out of the gangs, and he treated me very good. And I can't... It breaks my heart to see him say this. I can't believe that's him. I really can't. Is this one of the... Uh, is this one of the... Re uh, you're out of the gang, right? Yeah, I'm in a treatment center along with these three girls. You're in with, uh, with uh, Ocean and, yeah. and Michelle and Christina, right? right? Mm -hmm. Is that one of the reasons why, I mean, when you see kids change like that? Yeah, it's, it scares me. I know what I went through. I'm but using the drugs and hurting my mom. Is, the good thing is, you didn't change. You found something deep in you that said, I can't be that way. I'm proud of it. And I think that's what your therapists <laughs> and your counselors are looking for. What they're looking for is those feelings within you that you can bring to the surface. Everybody I think, I, you know, I, I don't want to belittle what Chris has done because she did make a decision to change, but unfortunately her father and I had to threaten her. Yeah, this is for Chris's mother. Um, you said that she tried to commit suicide. I mean, was, was this... I'm sorry. It's Christina's, Christina. right? Christina. Christina's mom. I'm sorry. Yeah, wasn't that Christina. some kind of sign that something was wrong somewhere? Yeah, that, that got her into her first rehab, too. I put her right into rehab. But it didn't work? No, it didn't work. It was short-term rehab. It that was about uh, four weeks. Then she went to another rehab when she relapsed, and that was three weeks. Then she relapsed again, and the last time she cut her wrist open and took an overdose of Valium and got drunk. And I went to the courts that time, and had her Myers acted into a long-term rehab. This is for the ladies that are still in the gang. I think you need to realize that you were born in this world by yourself and you don't need gang members to make you feel wanted because you're going to hey, die by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. Go ahead, Tina. I'm not still in the gang, okay? Ever since my boyfriend was killed, I've stayed away from it because I can be next. All the shootouts, but This is only a month ago. I, two months, Couple of ago. months ago, and then another one of my hey, friends died. I don't want to be next. Everybody thinks that it's so bad, right? But I, I don't go out and I don't pull guns. I don't use guns, okay? But, but does that make you the different? I mean, is that no? The it's not that. Thing? I don't go around doing stuff like that. I wait until somebody comes to me. I don't go out and start fights. Well, we why would you even want to be around those people? Because those are my friends. That's who I get along with. That's who I like. We're I don't want to be around Lori, can I say go, something for a second? Yeah. Kids that want to The problem is a lot of kids that are young are getting recruited because they don't draw as much heat. So these girls don't even know that they're getting used. And they're also more impressionable, aren't they? The younger exactly. you are. Yes. What would you want to say? Mm -hmm. Stand right up. I want to know how y'all feel every time y'all go around and smoke or show, shoot someone. Yeah. How did you feel when you carried that gun? Did you feel powerful as we talked about before, Christina? Yeah, definitely. You never had any remorse. 
I did. I you did. did. I did. Because I shot someone. I've never touched a gun in my life, and I never will. I don't think that it's right to go around shooting people. I mean, if that's what somebody's going to do, then they can do that, but I wouldn't shoot anybody. Neither would I. Yeah. Yes. No need for robbing. Uh, yes, my question is to the parents. Uh, I'm a parent of two young ladies. One is 20 and one is 15. Uh, the question is, was there ever any signs that you could detect to determine that your child was going to stray? I mean, um, or going to get into trouble. Or going to get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. For me, there was a lot of signs. I mean, they just all came about slowly. Skipping school, the low grades. Um, I mean, that's the way it always was. I mean, kids. when I was growing up, we did bad in school. I mean, somebody was going to be on your butt. You do. I mean, you know, we've talked to teachers. Christina has been in six different programs. It's not like we ignored the signs. It's yeah. just trying to get to the, the grit of the problem. And, and unfortunately, the girls have not always been honest with us, which I'm sure everybody realizes. And you can't help someone who will not help themselves. Um, I would just like to say that I think one of the problems here is that none of these girls up here understand how precious a human life is. And some people would blame that on your age, but I'm 17 years old, and I understand it. And it scares me to think that you're part of my future. But why is that? I mean, wh I mean Not why all of is us up here are like that? I was in the gang when I was 14. I'm 16 now, and yes, I value my life. I have oh, tried to change, okay? You guys over here, I'm living in Florida. You don't know how much hard I'm trying to change. I'm trying very I know you're trying to change. Well I'm proud of change, you. I'm okay? proud of you. And if, if you guys have problems that, oh, well, this is my life, and I'm trying to deal with it, I'm trying to make... I'm trying to help myself, and it isn't easy. I'm trying to do it. I haven't, been, I haven't seen my father since I was six years old. My father's living up here. He doesn't even have, he doesn't even have the guts to call me, find out how I'm doing. You can't blame it on somebody else, though. It's your problem. We'll be back after this. I just wanted to be cared about, so I did whatever it took to, to have the feelings of being cared for. And I guess that's how being in a gang, you know, because that's what I felt. They take advantage of you a lot, and if you want to or not, you know, that's a situation that I was put in that basically ruined part of my life, you know, because that's something that's very hard to deal with when that happens. Um, I've been threatened by gangs once in my school. Well, many times I've been threatened by people, but um, I was threatened by a gang, and 12... Boys, girls? Girls. They surrounded me. They said they didn't like the way I looked, the way I dressed. Um, in school, they surrounded me. They told me if I came around them anymore, they were going to hurt me. They said they would get me after school if, you know, if they couldn't get me in school. Just because they didn't like the way I looked or the way I dressed or whatever. And how did you react to that? I get it from some people, you know, um, but I've learned to deal with it. How I, do you deal with it? Well, I'm going to be who I'm going to be, and nobody's going to stop me. People... Um, people, a lot of people in school, you know, people have guts. They come up to me, you know, they, they, they'll pull my hair. They don't like, you know, what I'm wearing, whatever. And I tell them, you know, I tell them, look, this is the way I want to be. If you don't, you know, if you can't deal with it, then we'll talk about it. But I talk to people. I don't believe in violence. And people respect me because of that. Okay. And people will respect me. Who said we're not respected? You're going through tough times. What's the, what's bothering you? You're so sad. Because I'm trying to change and everybody's just... Nobody's against you. Believe me, nobody's against you. It takes a lot of guts to change. You know that? It really takes a lot of guts. Mm. You're showing a lot of courage. Okay? Don't stick know. with it. Really stick with it. Don't, don't even bother what anybody says, just what you feel. You know a lot of people are always going to misjudge you and not understand what you've gone through, okay? And you've got some good help out here. You've got your counselor here. You're going through this program. You're going to make it, okay? All right, okay? Mm -hmm. Don't cry. Don't cry. It makes me cry, okay? We'll be back. We'll be back. 